Recording, recording now. So welcome everyone to our Chaos Diversity and Inclusion Working Group meeting on November 4. This is the first time that we are using the new time at 11 a.m. Central. I hope everyone caught on to <laughs> the U.S. ending daylight savings time. Yeah. Um, I know for us it's easy. <laughs> um, I was hoping we would have more people since we changed the time and a lot of people said that they were available at this time, but it is what it is. So we have a new person. I don't know if you want to consider yourself a member of the community, but after this call, I'm sure you, we can consider you a member of the DNI working group. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just a quick um, intro. Um, I'm Salah. I'm uh, part of the Node.js, um, uh, like a new initiative in the new Node.js community committee um, that is uh, trying to close certain gaps that would even um, the odds for contributors, uh, as in how much contribution uh, is reflected for the effort they're you know giving in and participating with. Um, there is a lot more to it. Uh, it's not a clear um, uh, initiative yet. Yeah. Oh, I just remembered we do have a document for meeting minutes, which I'll post in the chat so that you're all on the same page. Okay, so this one is, I'm just trying to stay organized. Um, yeah, so uh, I can bullet point this stuff I- um, That'd second. be helpful. Okay, good. Uh, just bullet points, though. I'm I'm really bad at notes, so sorry about that. You know, bullet points are perfect. All right. Okay. So. Do you just want to copy the text from the issue you posted? I mean, if the link is there, maybe you just put the link and then um, that works. See, see the issue. I don't have to type. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Thank. Sure. No, just leave it. Don't. Remove it once we see contributions. Uh, different kinds of contributions uh, in the Node.js community. Once we see and probably do more. Recognize? Yeah, it, it's more about um, understanding accessibility from the fresh perspective it's taking now, including specifications, uh, where it is. Um, viewed as beyond just screen readers on size and you know uh, being able to read text that you couldn't without accommodations does not change the fact that it probably takes you a little bit of a different um, pace to be part of an ongoing uh, conversation that is on a conventional pace well, you know just mm -hmm. one of the reasons why this could felt like relevant at this point mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so since we're on the on the topic, then what um, what brought you to the Chaos DNI working group, and how can we help you in your efforts? Um, so so we're we're starting this, and um, I find that um, as I, I I believe the tools that exist for people to coordinate their efforts um, are kind of you know, geared towards those who can conventionally 
make use of them. And those who need accessibility uh, in order to be able to use these tools um, struggle to coordinate their efforts. Um, and they live in those like silos or islands of, you know, communities that are trying to bring accessibility to a medium. Um, and, um, but, but sadly they're, they're sparse. And, you know, as we, as we try to bring this initiative to Node.js, um, we also started trying to connect with, um, some providers of such tools like GitHub. Um, and GitHub basically, um, we had a, you know, a conversation or two and they mentioned the effort that you guys were doing and they said, you know, maybe, you know, one thing you could do meanwhile until we figure out, you know, the design space that is yet to happen is um, just, um, we'll let you know, there are other people and they're doing good work. And, and so this is where we, we kind of, you know, um, started to say, okay, we have to attend next meeting. That's why I'm here, and uh, yeah. Saulo did not join uh, sadly today, but he will hopefully in the future. Very cool. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We have uh, two more people join us, Kevin and Amy. Hello. What's up, Amy? Hey, long time no see. I like yeah. them in the meantime. <laughs> I hear the wind chime. <laughs> yeah. I'll stay muted. <laughs> oh, don't mute yourself. We like that sound. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so let's see. What else do we have on the agenda for today? Well, I've been going through, obviously, the templates, as you saw. Yep. So basically, just so everybody knows, um, we, as part of the chaos project, we release metrics that are meant to kind of explicate ways of understanding particular things, whatever those things might be. Um, and those metrics are, were released under a template back in, um, I guess our first release was in, um, where were we? Where were we? In August. In oh, August San in San Diego. And so, um, just in an effort to kind of improve the templating that's done on the release of metrics, we've standardized it just a little bit and we've had to go through all of the previous released metrics to get them under the new template. It hasn't changed the content at all, but it's, it's been a nice, um, a nice effort. So anyway, that's what, that's what this conversation is about. We basically, in the first release, we had two different templates that were part of the chaos metrics release. And we didn't like that. We just wanted a single template. So what you're seeing here is, so when I say updating the template, it's just going back to the priorly <laughs> released metrics, putting them under the new template so that when we re-release metrics or do a second release of metrics around FOSDEM and ChaosCon in January slash February, everything's under the new template. That's all. Yep, perfect. And thank you for leading that effort not. Yeah, it's slow, slow, but sh slowly but surely. I'm just going through every working group. Yeah. So just again, for those of you that don't know, we have uh, five different working groups in the Chaos Project, DNI being one of them. We also have risk and value and evolution in common. And so I'm just going through work group by work group to get this done, the new templating done. So do you want to? Can we just maybe we could just talk through these and get them closed and merged? I just went through before the meeting and closed uh, all but one. Okay. There's one here. Let me put the link in the minutes so that everyone has access. It's pull request 233. And there was just one comment when you go look at the files change. Oh, I see. Okay. Remove the observe whether a code of conduct is posted. I didn't but I not captured it. There was in this metric, there was some repetition in the top bullet points. That's all I thought I had, you know what I mean? Like it, some of the, some of the sample success strategies and the, the top overview, there was a lot of duplication. So right. maybe, maybe I had accidentally deleted it when I didn't I mean think to what, do. Yeah. In uh, line 35, it had said if 
code of conduct is posted. Okay. And the next one again said posted, but one is on the website and one is at the location of the oh, event. Oh, maybe that was it, that yeah. I just kind of read them both as the same postedness. Yeah, so I can see how that came to be. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that and then. Okay, that's the uh, only thing that I had here. Okay, well, don't let this hold us up in terms of other things, but I'll fix that and then. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Is there any questions about the metric template or anything about this effort we have for updating the metrics? And feel free to ask anything. All the time, anytime. All the time, anytime. Please do interrupt us. Okay, then we move on to uh, review. Uh, well, I'll, I'll make a comment on this too. This is kind of for Sala. As you're looking to bring um, bring a metric forward or some way of, of something, you're trying to articulate something, right? Yeah. And so typically the way that we do this in the project is we think about there's, there's the template, um, which is basically what is the description? What's the question you're trying to, to address? All right. Um, and then what's the description, objective, and possible implementation of this metric? So this might give you something to think about. Mm -hmm. So how would you, if there, is, if there is a metric, like a single metric that you're thinking about, or is it a collection of metrics, or is it? So, so it, it's a very, very tricky one to actually, I, like I'm here, soul searching for, for metrics <laughs> uh, because um, as it stands, when I have accessibility related issues on uh -huh. the model and um, I, I'll, I'll be one of two, I'll either play the safe one where I know that it's not always addressed well, um, or at least maybe people want me to tell them how they can help me Whereas I'm there telling them that what they offer everyone is not working for me. So, so I'm, not, I'm not opening a bug issue or a fix, but rather I want to talk about something where personal detail is relevant. And so it being public domain um, makes me feel like it's safer not to do that. And I tried doing that. It was safer not doing that. Um, and, and, and so what metrics can we put in place to tell people who don't have a way to listen to the reality that there are disabilities introduced onto people through design of open source software in, in, in contribution spaces um, because we don't have feedback mechanisms that can actually let us hear those who are finding it um, hard mm -hmm. to navigate um, the public forum approach of, of filing issues. That's totally um, fair. Yep, that makes a ton of sense. So um, in this soul searching, maybe <laughs> I put a link in the chat. All right, so the way that chaos structures its metrics is under a goal question metric approach. And so it's, a, it's not our approach, it's a fairly standard approach in terms of just kind of thinking about things. So the metric is the last thing that we talk about generally. And, and so right here we have different focus areas, as you can see, kind of one through seven, and they all have specific goals associated with them. And then within the goals, there are a series of questions that can help you kind of address that goal. And then the questions themselves will need metrics to actually answer the question, right? And so um, I guess maybe part of, and you don't have to answer it now, but part of the soul searching could be, does what you're talking about fit within any of these focus areas? And if it does, then you can click on the focus area. So perhaps it's communication inclusivity, listening to you talk. Um, 
And then there, you can see that there's, if you look at communication inclusivity, there's a series of, if you scroll down just a little bit on that readme file, there's a series of questions that get answered. Or there is a series of questions, I guess, that are brought up. Do you see it there? So um, uh, could we share screen? Um, because I'm, I'm looking at a page that has a table under communication and inclusivity. Yep. Um, and that table has, oh, name, question. OK, yeah. yeah. Yep. I saw that. It's the second column, right? <laughs> Correct. It's all the right. second column. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I got there. Uh, OK. And so yeah. there may be a series of, in, in any of these sets of questions, they're certainly not um, like the definitive set that defines communication inclusivity. This is just the working group thinking about ways to provide more insight with respect to communication inclusivity in this case. Yeah. Um, and it may be more, maybe less. Um, we're always just trying to provide more transparency on whatever it is the particular goal is that we're, that we're aiming at. I mean, that's, that's a, a, an amazing uh, framework. Like right now, so far we have been working with the framework of we wish, right? So <laughs> you guys are like, okay, and if you do, maybe you want to structure it. <laughs> yeah, you can structure it. And then there would be a, so then to answer any of these questions, so for example, alternatives, if you click on, say, alternatives in that table, the name there, or technical jargon or captioning or whatever it might be, you can see that these aren't built out yet, but this is then the actual metric. So if you want to do a metric with respect to captioning, and we haven't built it out yet, but this is how we would propose you capture that data so that you can understand captioning better, so that you can understand, you can answer that question that's associated with captioning better, and that you can achieve the overall goal, which is communication inclusivity. So one, one question, uh, just, just to see how, to answer the part, like how can we help one another, right? Yeah. Um, so this is open for contribution from anyone in the open source community? Of course. That's me speaking, or yes. you know, anyone in the community in general becoming an open source contributor um, when they join this effort, right? Yes. Exactly. Oh, perfect. Um, I, I'll definitely bring this back to um, Salo. Like, I'm, I'm saying the initiative, but I mean, um, yeah. the community committee um, uh, is, is definitely supporting our efforts. You know, we have a lot of things happening in it in general. Um, and this is fairly the smallest, um, youngest initiative. Yep. Um, um, so, so, but I mean, eventually, you know, the work that you're doing here is you're describing the pro problems in a, in a framework that is very mm -hmm. systematic. Um, it's not dismissive of the magnitude um, that every person who is in passion would actually feel that, okay, someone is able to help me put my voice. Um, in, in ways that other people can read and understand. And yep. it's not about on, on them to figure out how to communicate in the language of the convention. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. that's, that's really inspiring. Thank you for sharing. Oh, sure. So, yeah. <laughs> Anything we can do to help. <laughs> Hopefully we will too. We'll uh, try to get to join in on those. Yeah, things. and in fact, a lot of the calls, we I don't know what you're going to do today, Georg, but in a lot of the calls, I mean, we will actually work together, the people who are on the call, to actually help build mm -hmm. the, the framework. So it's not even something that you need to have fully worked out, um, but the preliminary ideas can come forward and we can just do the work and say a Google Doc. I, I mean, th this is concrete work, right? So, mm -hmm. so the fact that it's a mutual um, built um, framework, you know, that, that is mutually built by many folks mm -hmm. um, means that um, it is also, it, it, it's like, a, um, you know, to, you know, fireproof or battle tested or whatever the word. Yeah, is. a little it, field it, tested. <laughs> More than one person just saying this is the way it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so thank you. Yeah, you bet. And what one way I also like to think of this is if this structure makes sense to you and your um, efforts, 
that we work on these together. And if you want to advance a certain area and certain questions and metrics that you want to have, uh, we can be your sounding board. We can help think through it and then you can use it and we can maybe even add it to the set of metrics that we have in chaos. So that's excellent. We have on our agenda to review issues. And one thing that I wanted to add also is the Apache survey, which is currently in its final review before it hopefully gets posted on uh, Friday, I think is the plan. Okay. So here I posted the link to the Apache community survey. Okay. And just as uh, background information, the um, Apache Software Foundation has a diversity effort and they want to assess how they are doing right now, where they stand. And so the, uh, the work that we have done in the chaos project is, was very relevant and was used in informing the survey questions. And uh, Apache also hired Biturgia, the company that I worked for to execute the survey and analyze it. Um, so that's how the connection came to be, or that's what the connection is right now. So remember what they brought forward from the chaos project. Do you know what stitched together there? So one of the things that we recommend is using the open demographics questions mm -hmm. that uh, Nikki yep. uh, put together. And so those are being used and as a way to standardize the demographic questions. Okay. And I, I haven't looked, um, I, I don't remember all of the questions that. Kind of translated across. That, yeah, ended up okay. in here. Okay. And several of them, even if they inspired questions had to be adjusted. I see. To the Apache software project. Okay. Um, because certain terms have specific meanings. Sure. Um, okay. And then is, is Baturgia, are you using Grimoire Lab for this? Grimoire Lab being the open source tool that is part of the Chaos Project from Baturgia, or is this more of a... So for the survey itself, there is no Grimoire Lab involved. Okay. The there are two more components to the research effort as a whole. Okay. Um, one is in-depth interviews. Yep. So after the survey is complete, we will take those results back to the community and go over them in detail mm -hmm. and get feedback on ideas for solutions and so on. Okay. And then the third part is taking the insights from the survey and interview to explore how this is shown in the collaboration patterns in the projects. So that is where Grimoire Lab comes in, where we then look okay. at the actual interaction in the communities. Okay. My, my question is, if you can't tell, are kind of chaos serving questions, like they're specific to that, but that's helpful what you just described. Yeah. The, the, the survey itself is relying on some chaos interaction in developing the survey. There sounds like there's things that are specific to Apache or ASF that they care about. Um, the interviews are probably, I'm guessing, to dig a little bit deeper on some of the survey questions and reveal insights that might be interesting, sounds like. Mm -hmm. And then the final stage is actually using Grimoire Lab to take a look at activity metrics or sp some specific metrics right. that then can be kind of related to the survey data and interview data. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's interesting. Thanks for sharing. 
Yeah, you're welcome. So anyone and everyone is welcome to give feedback on the survey. Okay. Um, I think we have until, I, I don't remember when the review period closes. Can I ask my perpetual question as to whether or not the ASF is going to share this survey publicly so that other foundations or large projects could potentially use this survey to query their own communities? I ask this every time. I, really, I would love to have a, if somebody's putting the, if ASF is putting the time and effort yeah. to develop a, a diversity survey that is meaningful to understand DNI related issues in their communities, it would be fantastic if that survey was made publicly available to other project, other communities, foundations, conservancies, whatever it might be. So they did it last time. Okay. In 2016, and okay. from my knowledge, they want to do it again this year. Okay. And then the OpenStack one, we shared that on that, um, I think it was a Google Doc that went through Twitter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's just so important to share those things because there's so much work that's put into them. That's all. That any, like, lowering the bar, the access bar for others would be fantastic. Yeah. Here, the document, if you scroll down in the minutes, um, I'll put it up at the top. What are you putting in there? What Amy is referencing. Oh, the OpenStack one? OK. The surveys we collect. Well, the, the Google Doc there. that had a list of DNI surveys on it. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I yeah. Know about. OK. And yeah, I posted the link at the bottom of today's minutes and OpenStack is definitely in here. Okay. The 15 survey and the 19 survey. Okay. Um, I'm gonna then, I'll also ask a follow-up question, which is about, it's again about transparency. So if um, I have, if Baturji is running the survey, which I have zero problem with, um, would they be willing to share kind of how the analysis occurred? Because that's another kind of complicated, it's one thing to, to post a survey and collect data, as you know, and then it's a whole other thing to actually do the process of analysis. So any transparency on that would be extremely helpful as well. Um, I could also mention that um, in our soul searching, um, uh, you know, the wisdom was, um, I know at least one side of, um, of many, many different sides that we don't know about. And so as, as a first step for the initiative, um, they're all telling us, just open the PR already. And we're like, we didn't write anything. Uh, we need a survey. And, and so um, we have an annual Node.js survey. And it was like, oh, if you get something by the end of the week, you know, we can put in. So, so we put together a set of gate, gateway questions um, to just gear ourselves to actually be unrolling surveys, um, targeting proper samples, because um, likely the sample of the annual survey is not necessarily going to be um, mm -hmm. full of people who, 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 you know, do not necessarily open issues in repos. So, so, um, so I, I just wanted to mention that, you know, it's, it's really amazing that I have the link of all these surveys and, you know, now, now we can borrow some, um, you know, open contribution, it's fair. Um, but also I wanted to drop the link to our draft, which is now upstream for um, translation and other things. Uh, and I'll just put it in the chat. Um, these are like, you know, are just our best effort to get a survey um, um, like a few questions in a survey that is big already um, and, and not necessarily our best effort to write a comprehensive survey that answers the questions, just generally points us in the direction of the other. Mm -hmm. and all input is greatly appreciated. Great, thank you. Thank you. I, if, if you don't mind, I also added the link to the minutes. Certainly, thank you. Yeah, at the top where we talked about the Node.js. Um, I'm looking at the survey questions you have right now.
Very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't think we have those kinds of questions anywhere in the chaos metrics yet. Yeah, see, it's it's um, the first time people will see questions like that, and you want to you don't want it to come as a oh no, did I go in the wrong survey somewhere? You know, like you want them to be just okay, you flow. There are three four questions that were new. Um, they'll get better, <laughs> you know, but they're very casual, you know, in, in my opinion. So. Um, no, no, not necessarily metrics uh, building at this point. Okay. So, I the first one. Are you routinely affected by the following in your development work? Audio visual visual related. Yeah. So th is that a question of when you're developing, you are using your eyes. Um, yeah, so, so are you routinely affected in any of the following, let's put it this way, uh, in any of the following capacities? Uh, much about what is the right terminology, uh, you know, the PC terminology or the safe terminology. So we're taking this view, uh, obviously there are mistakes that, um, wording mistakes that can be improved. Um, but we're taking this philosophy of saying, okay, where, where do you struggle? Which areas, you know, of, of functionality uh, are you finding it? Are you finding that you are affected in? Um, and, and, and here we're just trying to see the composition of, um, of you know, um, like, like the divide, basically. Like, which, which areas do people have more struggle with in general? Um, and if we find that most people don't have anything, uh, then we're saying, okay, we don't have the right diversity, you know? So, so it's kind of like a question that can lead to um, many qualitative aspects, but not necessarily quantitative um, at this point. Um, so, um, yeah, so, oh, definitely. Um, yeah, that's a really good suggestion. Uh, thank you. Um, I mean, the draft has been up for almost uh, three weeks. Um, so, so thank you. That that's that's definitely the kind of improvement uh, we were waiting for. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll have to spend some more time after the oh, meeting going through this. That's great. Thank yeah. you. So, so I get something out of joining today. You know. <laughs> No, no, Hi. you guys, you guys definitely, it's, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. So that's really good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, one, so one of the things we could look into um, maybe for next time is how we can take the questions that you have formulated and fit them into uh, the chaos structure so that we can, because these are questions that we currently don't have fleshed out. So if that's where your work is right now, that would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, and, and we will borrow the framework to develop the focus surveys that are meant to actually understand, you know, people who identify as wanting to be part of further surveys or focus groups, or um, then we want to tailor a structured approach with your framework to actually listen to what they're trying to say and, and document, um, you know, what can GitHub do to make it itself more accessible to people who fall under this bracket or that bracket. So, um, you know, GitHub being one tool, of course. But, yeah. Cool, excellent. Okay, we talked about the Apache survey. If you have, if you want to take a look, if you want to see what's happening there. Oh, you had a question, Matt, before we diverted uh, about the process, whether the analysis process will be shared. Yeah, it's just. And I don't know. Okay. So. That's the best that I can answer. <laughs> it's better than no. <laughs> Somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, 
Anita Sama from Oregon State is the lead on okay. the survey and the analysis. And we have permission from Apache to publish. Oh, well, I mean, if she's, if she's going to publish this as a paper, a group of people are just going to publish this as a paper. Yeah. I mean, if she's going to publish even just high level perspective on the methods. Right. That'd be helpful. So I, I believe there will be a publication. Okay. Um, okay. Is there anything that any of you would like to discuss today or do today? Because otherwise I will pull some things out of my head of things. That well, I, well, I certainly have something. So part of what, uh, all right. So um, we had talked about the, the DNI badging program around events, if you recall. Mm -hmm. And one of our focus areas is around events. So trying to understand DNI with respect to events. So like diversity access tickets, um, code of conduct for the event, family friendliness, speaker demographics and attending demographics. And one of the suggestions that came up maybe two weeks ago was that we should start templating and working out attendee demographics and speaker demographics as metrics to kind of aim at providing more transparency on the goal of you know, better understanding event diversity. So okay. those have not been started yet. And to me, those make a ton of sense for candidate metrics to release with version two prior to FOSDEM. Yes, especially now that we are also working with the LF. We, oh, I think right. we need to, we, so we have. Have we started them? Yeah, event diversity attendees demographics has some text could put, already. Could you put that in the minutes or the chat? Yes. Attendee demographics. Maybe we just start there if it already has something. And yeah, and then we also have the speaker demographics, which also has some questions and text already. So I think we just need to finish them. Okay. Do we have Google Docs for these things? Let me look that up real quick. Okay. If we have them, they should be in the issue list. Okay. Are you looking? I'm looking too. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Uh, we closed those tickets. I see those. <laughs> but we can revive them. Yeah, is there a Google Doc in there? There is. Yeah. All right, I am actually in. Yeah, let's bring those back to life. Okay. Are you reopening them? Uh, I can. I, well, I'm actually in the Google Doc at the moment. So. Okay, I will reopen the issues then. So basically, just I, I just put a thing in the chat just so people know. Basically, when we're developing a new... So this is under the focus area of event, event diversity, and we have attendee demographics and speaker demographics as important metrics to help gain clarity on event diversity. Typically we work in a Google Doc first or some sort of shared document first, just so we can all work together, just because GitHub's not great for that kind of stuff. And then once we're done with that, or done like to the sense that somebody wants to basically copy and paste this into yeah. GitHub and issue it as a PR, um, we can kind of take care of it then. So. Um, I just put the link to, I just picked event diversity. Is that all right with you? Yep. Yeah, Matt, looking at those two GitHubs, yeah. I don't think getting the numbers are going to be hard, but they all talk, both of them talked about interviews, which could be a little harder if people are on on site. So which one are you looking at? 
Okay, first speak. Well, both of them had it, but speaker demographics. Okay. Yeah. And then interview question: Ask speakers what are what do we do? Well, we can definitely grab numbers, but if no one from like D and I is there, we may not be able to get the interviews. Yeah, no, that's fair. And I think a lot of these, like the the implementation and date, like data collection strategies, like I totally agree. Sometimes it's just it's not possible perhaps in certain cases, or I think in other cases, um, the cost of doing that work might outweigh the value derived from actually doing the work. So all that we're trying to do in these is saying, these are possible approaches that you could take. Okay. Cause like I can definitely open stack some what's going on right now. Yeah. In Shanghai, I'm in Texas. So, <laughs> um, I doing can interviews. Definitely... Yes. Yeah, so I could definitely pull numbers, and there's a chance you could send a survey afterwards, but the chance of people actually answering it, you know, are tend to be slim to none, so. Yeah. No, it's usually on registration that you have the best, the best opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just, for, just in terms of the sample, the data collection strategies, these are ways that you might be able to, to answer the question associated with this metric. Okay. Um, in all of these cases, just as, you know, I wish we could just say, push this button, <laughs> you'll get the data that you need <laughs> to answer the question. That would be like miraculously awesome. So all that we're ever trying to do is just provide some clarity on ways to move forward in a positive way towards gaining some clarity on the question at hand. So. So I'm looking at the Google Doc and the um, markdown file that we have. And what I propose is to actually copy the markdown into the Google Doc and then work from that version. Is it more advanced or something? Uh, it just already has the formatting and- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With all the, all the- So- Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And, and I can- Mark this as a heading one. So again, I just put the link to that Google Doc that Georg just did in the chat. And we also need to update the template. So that's the first thing we can do. So for the rest of the session, I propose that we just make it a working session where we work on this metric and if you're interested in seeing how we work, just join us. If you have other things to do, then that's fine. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt at any time and ask us. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to be uh, around. Uh, we, we definitely will uh, borrow a lot of what we see happen today here. You know, uh, we'll come every week for more, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully down the road we'll be participating in helping out. You know, okay. Just uh, watching. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I look forward to it. Okay, which I think you got everything here, Georg. Yep. So I think we updated it. Yep. So now the question is whether this um, metric already satisfies the need for the badging program or if we need to add anything or fix anything. Do we, only, do we keep that there? Do we keep what? The, the focus area. Don't we do that? Yeah, we can remove it, that's fine. Okay. Um, all right, so let's see. I mean, let's just take a look at the question. If we're trying, if this is a focus area on understand, or I'm sorry, if this is a question, what is the question? That is the question. How diverse are the attendees? Okay, so is that the appropriate question to gain better insight on event diversity? Yes. 
<laughs> Seems like the appropriate question to me too. I have no issues with that. Okay, so let's take a look at the description. Attendees who represent a variety of, uh, where does that link out to? The list of demographics we have on. Is that the Nikki? No, this is our own. So okay. if you're, let me put it in the chat. We have a list of demographics, dimensions of demographics. Okay. I like see. gender identity, sexual orientation, age, location, socioeconomic status, tenure, race, first language, confidence in English, disability, caregiver, and so on and so forth. I see. Okay. Yeah. So when we put this together, if I remember correctly, we didn't want to reiterate all those, but have one central location. I see. And so this is this, this category of DNI is not a question. It's not one of those. It's not a metric. The dimensions it's, of demographics is not a question. Question slash with a metric. Okay. Even though there, there's a goal associated with it. I'm looking at the GitHub repo. I see it. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what it's doing there. I mean, if it's not part of the goal question metric structure, remove it. I'm yeah, I would propose to remove goal statement there. I'm creating a pull request right now. Okay. I totally get what this list is doing. It makes sense. Yeah, it's a reference basically. Yep. Okay. To do it. I'm writing my pull request comment right now. Okay. Pull request created. All right. <laughs> Good job. I'll take a look at that after the meeting. Of course. Um, okay. So then in terms of the description, attendees who represent a variety of of demographics that list help an event provide different viewpoints and maybe broader perspectives. Attendees from a variety of different backgrounds. It's not a great sentence. Yeah, no, I that does not help in the description. That's more of an objective to make them feel included in the outcome. So, I mean, really the description of this metric, um, to determine um, attendee Demo, I'm really bad on typing. Graphics as attendees, something like that. Okay, the sentence, we need to split it up. There are several things going on here. Well, you like short sentences, I like longer sentences. Yeah. <laughs> I know that about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine and we can split it up I don't care but I mean the description of this metric is to determine attendee demographics because okay so to determine, determine or we just do helps because helps then speaks to determining not the attendees so what about that Yeah. So, I mean, the descriptions don't have to be long. But I think some of the metrics are f almost <laughs> fairly self explanatory. To determine attendee demographics helps an event, helps 
uh, I'm thinking something like indicates whether an event has the potential for showing different weak points. Poten indicate potential. Yeah, helps indicate the potential for different viewpoints and broader perspectives. Yes, spot on. Okay. Okay. Um, the objectives, so it would be something like determine if, sorry. Forget. I'm going to stop typing for a second. <laughs> okay, then I will. I'm just leaving it alone. Stop. I'm stopping. Determine if attendees are from different diverse backgrounds. Um, determine if different areas of an event are have diverse attendees or if there are clusters of. Um, yeah, that's better than just the tracks and the. Is shared across different event spaces like sessions and tracks. And then determine repeat attendees. So then we can start with retain attendees. Mm -hmm. Retain attendees. I'm not going to delete it. Okay. Determine if the diversity is shared across different event spaces like sessions and tracks. Retain attendees from diverse events, from diverse backgrounds. It duplicates the top one. Yep. Um, the question is, which one is better? Ensuring that we have them as a goal or determining as a goal? Um, yeah, I, to me, this is all about determination. Okay. And then... We've had these talks before, like, it's hard for us to, like, ensure anything. Yeah. But that could be the objective of the person who wants to use the metric. Correct. Right, exactly. But that's out of our scope of influence. Okay. We don't have to renew this conversation. No. It's a good conversation, but... <laughs> We've had it. So basically, just so everybody knows, the, the, this conversation is about how much in the chaos project, how far out we can go. How, to what degree can we express things? And so, for example, it's difficult for us to, and we're, we're very agnostic on our metrics by default. So it's difficult for us to say that this is a good or a bad thing, because that starts in, it starts bringing value judgment from the project, which we don't want to do, because in certain cases it might, something might be good, in other cases it might be bad. And so this is, this is the root of this conversation right here. Okay, so implementation. Um, so I've been getting rid of that typically because it's this is what has been repeated below. You know what I'm saying? Yep, get rid of it. Wait, but we don't have those word for word. Well, if we had them word for word, okay, I'll bring them back, but. We don't. Analyze registration data for attendee demographics. All right, so that one can stay. I'm just going to move, yeah, this move. Yeah. basically up here. Survey and or interview attendees. I mean, we have interview. We can get rid of that one. Yes, that one can go. 
and interview question that should be a separate bullet point. Yeah. And what were we, remember the, the Likert scale? Weren't we doing like one to X or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to look up what we did there, but yes. All right, so let's take a look at these questions, actually. We have three minutes, just so you know, Georg. OK. Analyze registration data. Interview attendees to understand more about why the event did or did not meet their diversity. That isn't that question's a little different, isn't it? So to me, up until these interview questions, it's been about trying to understand diversity within the event. This is more of a question about asking folks whether or not they felt it was diverse. So to me, those are part of the same coin. One is having raw data that shows diversity okay. and one is asking attendees if they actually felt that the event was diverse. That's fair. Okay. But um, that's also going to be really hard to ask at registration. Correct. That would be something to ask afterwards or right. during the event. But it is a possible approach we can take. Um, can I just um, mention that it's very, very important to back what you believe is um, quantitative numbers that nobody can argue with, with um, qualitative numbers of perception. Um, I, I studied color science a bit, and you know, until today, we don't really know how much plus or minus two colors are different. Um, and there are too many ways, too many formulas that give you a number. Um, and um, but the, but you know, the qualitative visual backing shows that uh, every method has really bad areas. Um, you know, where two people will tell you, you know, those two colors are five or six numbers different according to their perception. Um, so, yeah. Um, may I suggest actually dedicating a time for the survey that gives you the best quali qualitative uh, feedback um, as opposed to maybe splitting it because splitting might not give you the, the complete um, picture, uh, like people who take the first round might not take the second round, or you know, so so don't don't span it on two at the registration and other point. I don't mm -hmm. think that would be a good uh, snapshot. Um, that's it. At least that's how working color, right? So where would you put that? Where would you put that in here? Um, that's a good point. I I mean, yeah. Um, so, so I think it has to do with when the survey is given. As qualitative, you want to do it before uh, people leave, which usually is halfway through, uh, to get uh, you know everyone, especially those who want to leave halfway through. Um, um, but at registration, it definitely in this point is um, yeah. all of, you know, everybody will be very very optimistic about diversity. Uh, we'll get really bad subjective. Uh, no, that's fair. That's totally fair. I think Georg's jotting it down. I put a note in there too. Yeah. We'll have to pick this up. We are at the end of the hour. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you if anybody is so inclined, this document will be open forever. <laughs> you are more than welcome to make comments or additions here. Um, Gary, I'm guessing we'll just pick this up also next week. Yes. Okay. We'll continue this next week. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Well, so much. Thank you so much. Oh, thank yeah. You you bet. Much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.